Hi everyone! Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura and on my channel I talk about things related to career, tech, productivity, and other life advice. If any of this sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to this channel and also liking this video to help show your support. In today's video, I wanted to spend some time summarizing my computer science degree. A quick caveat is that I attend a single university, Oregon State University, and so my experience is going to be a lot different from your experience. I've been inspired by videos made by Miyuko and also Jarvis, so I'll link both of their videos down below in the description if you're interested in listening to their experiences as well. Let's jump in by starting with my background and how I got into college with a computer science major. Across the board, I applied to 14 different colleges in economics, and I really thought that economics was going to be the way to go that would propel me into an amazing career on Wall Street in finance and investment banking. I also didn't really want to sell my soul to have 80 to 100 hour work weeks just to be living on Wall Street and doing my job there. So after I got my college decisions, I actually only got accepted to two schools. So definitely don't take my advice when it comes to applying to colleges. But I ended up going to Oregon State University just because it was a much cheaper option. So I was still an econ major at this point, but I knew that finance was absolutely not the path that I wanted to take. So I did a quick elimination search. I knew that A, I never wanted to do anything related to hard sciences, chemistry, biology, and besides, I didn't want to go to residency and go through those years of med school either. B is I also knew that I did not want to do anything that involved me having to make something. It just wasn't really in my interest to be physically building things out. So that really left the liberal arts field of econ and poli-sci and maybe a few other majors, computer science and math. So I had no idea what I'd do with a math degree. I briefly considered poli-sci to go into the field of law, but again, I just didn't really want to go to more school. So that settled it. I picked computer science because I could get in and out with a bachelor's degree and set myself up for the best career of a lifetime. Or at least that's what everyone told me and I believe them. Speaking of which, we'll get into some college fundamentals, college basics, and then really discuss my freshman, sophomore year, etc. College basic. So when you go to college, you're either attending a semester school or a quarter based school. Semester schools means you have two main semesters, fall and spring, and you take semester long classes, which is gonna be around 15 weeks. In a quarter school system, we have four quarters in a year, so spring, summer, fall, winter, although the summer quarter is an optional quarter because it's just basically taking summer classes and these are each 10 weeks long. So in general, you are going to school for 30 weeks in both cases. In any case, with a degree, you're gonna have a major part of your degree and also just general education requirements. In any case, the majority of your credits will be coming from general education requirements that you need to fulfill and then classes that you take for your major. At a state school, a lot of your AP credits will have high transferability. So the more AP classes you take in high school, the better off you'll be typically, especially when it comes to public state schools. For private schools, your luck will be a little bit different. So I would just refer to your specific school's guidance on what AP scores are accepted. Luckily for me, a lot of my scores were accepted, which means that I got to skip out on taking a lot of the general education requirements. Let's dive into fall 2018, where I was a freshman. The first class that I'm taking here is gonna be CS160H, or computer science orientation. This was a pre-intro to computer science class, basically. It taught you how to think about algorithms and designing programs, and we worked in Python. This class also had a lab component where we used Lego Mindstorms, and that was just the worst time of my life. In terms of applicability, I thought that this class was a good introductory class. In terms of difficulty, I would say that, yeah, this class is pretty difficult just because I didn't come in with any sense of programming. And there are a lot of people in the class that actually did have programming. So cue imposter syndrome and also cue a lot of thoughts about how will I ever catch up to these people, blah, 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 blah. You'll catch up, don't worry, it's fine. I just really didn't have any of classes that I could take. So this first term was kind of wonky, but I ended up taking vector calculus one, which was math 254, fun class. I really enjoyed the applications of calculus here. So women, gender, and sexuality studies is going to be WGSS223. I learned a little bit from it. It was kind of just one of those classes that I took just to take and to fulfill a requirement, which you might find yourself doing pretty often as you try to round out your education. Lastly was a required English class I had to take, writing 121H, English composition. So my first term here, I took 15 credits, which is the recommended amount of credits that you're supposed to take in a given term. To maintain your full student status, you need to take at least 12 credits. So there's at least a three credit buffer between the recommended and the minimum to be a full-time student. Just as a note, I'll probably touch more on the CS classes than the general education requirements, 
just because there are so many classes you can take for your general education requirements and they'll probably be different from the ones that I took too. So winter 2018 was when I really decided to overload myself with classes. I took 19 credits this term because I've heard, you know, winter term, you don't really go out and do much. It's really cold and it's dark outside, so why not load up on classes? I took my first real CS class, which was CS161, Intro to Computer Science, and we started programming in C++. Again, I spent many long nights crying over assignments in this class because they're really hard and I had no idea what object-oriented programming was, and you might not either. In general though, I thought that this class did a great job of preparing me for the next class in this series, which is going to be CS162, and you'll have a similar progression of classes at your university as well, I'm sure. This class is just kind of your standard run-of-the-mill intro to CS classes, and yeah, I, there's not too much to say here. Here are all the other general education requirements that I had to take. The only other class I really want to note this term is going to be Math 231, which is Elements of Discrete Mathematics. This is going to be a commonly required course for a CS degree. This class really focuses more on logic-oriented math, so proofs, sets, combinatorics, stuff like that. You don't really have to worry about any super complex proofs popping up in computer science, but having this background will be helpful just moving forward, looking at algorithms and data structures and those cool courses. I also want to shout out the Music 108 class that I took, which is Music Cultures and Native American Flute. I don't know, it was just really fun to play a flute every week. Okay, spring 2019, we hit a new year. This is where we're really hitting our stride in freshman year. I feel like I have a much better grasp on programming at this point, and I understand what I'm doing for the most part, but maybe not at a middle school level. So this term I took CS162, which is gonna be Intro to Computer Science 2, Electric Boogaloo. So this class just continued the same concepts from the previous Intro to Computer Science class. We went more in depth on pointers, memory management, dynamic arrays slash vectors, and just other basic concepts that you need to know to be okay at C++. Classes were also a big one. This term is also the point in which I opted to start doing a math minor, so that's why you'll see a few more math classes popping up on my transcript here. So I took Linear Algebra 1, and I also took Introduction to Probability. Introduction to Probability was pretty straightforward, but I did find Linear Algebra to be a little bit more complicated. That being said though, I did really enjoy the class, I just think that the tests slash exams in my course were a little bit harder, and that I probably could have studied a little bit better for these exams. I would highly encourage a math minor as a natural pairing with a computer science major, just because there is a decent amount of overlap in the classes that you need to take to fulfill a math minor and also to get your computer science major. Another class of note is going to be Stats 314, which is Statistics for Engineers. If you took AP Stats in high school, then this class will feel really similar, and you'll also have a good background going into your computer science degree. Summer 2019, I decided to take a few CS classes because I wanted to just get ahead and start taking data structures immediately my sophomore year. So over the summer while I was interning, I took CS271 and CS290, which are gonna be computer architecture and assembly language and web development. Computer architecture and assembly was actually my favorite class that I had taken up until that point, just because it dove so much deeper into understanding how to communicate with computers and how code written in C or just general higher level programs are decoded down into assembly language. It was, again, a pretty difficult class just because it was new concepts all over the board, but with a little bit of studying and also hard work, we made it through that class. The other class was gonna be web development, which was pretty easy breezing for the first couple of weeks. And then suddenly I hit a huge wall head on when it came to integrating with a database. And that also came with a lot of frustrations. We also had a really janky final that I ended up getting like a 70% on, but yeah, we don't talk about that. In general though, you'll see that these two under level courses are gonna be the fundamentals of building up your computer science knowledge and just getting a little bit more deeper and deeper as you move on through the 100s, 200s, 300s, 400s. So fall 2019 was my first year being a sophomore. I took CS261, which is our data structures course, and this was a pretty fun course. The professor that I took this class with was great, and he really made the class a lot more enjoyable. The assignments were pretty straightforward, and a lot of the requirements were always laid out really cleanly for us, and so there weren't really any hiccups with the data structures course, as I've heard with some other colleges or just more difficult offerings of data structures. Definitely do pay attention to data structures though, because this will be the foundation of a lot of programming interviews, and understanding the whole concepts behind data structures, which is literally just structures or objects that help you hold and manipulate data when it comes time to dealing with data. Again, you'll see a few more math courses, Linear Algebra 2, 
an ultra intro to numerical analysis. These were just for my math minor. And lastly is public speaking. I only took 14 credits. I probably should have taken another class, but I just didn't want to tack on an extra three or four credits. And it was just nice having a more relaxing fall term too. So winter 2020, the last term before you know what happened. This was a really interesting course load because as you can see, I kind of exhausted all my general education requirements and it just came down to taking pure CS courses. So I took five CS courses this term. One of the first classes is gonna be CS325 or analysis of algorithms. This will be your infamous algorithms course that you'll hear so often about when it comes to interviewing and interview prep. This class was really proof heavy and the assignments were pretty dang difficult. I was really lucky though, and I got with a great group of people and they really helped me understand what was actually going on in the class as well as the assignments. So when in doubt, if you have no idea what's going on, just go talk to someone smarter than you and hopefully they are kind enough to sit down with you and talk through some of the concepts going on. I also just generally found doing more practice problems and practice proofs really helped push me through this class. And even though the midterm and final were pretty rough, I found that just having that extra background knowledge and extra practice was helpful to solidify some of my misunderstandings. I would also highly recommend going to office hours just to raise any clarifications or any doubts that you may have about any of your answers or just material in class. The next class is gonna be CS344 or Operating Systems 1. I never ended up going to lecture for this class just because they had online videos posted at the time, and so I just ended up watching all these online videos instead of going to class. As a college student, I was a big proponent of just scheduling everything in in one time block, and I'll show you a picture of what my calendar looked like during my sophomore year, but I ended up scheduling TA office hours over this operating systems time. Not really a life hack, but just kind of a tip is if you do have online or pre-recorded lectures, then it may be well worth your time to just watch those pre-recorded lectures at two times speed instead of going to live lecture. But again, it really just depends on how you learn. So if you learn best by actually being there in lecture and asking questions, then by all means, please show up to lecture. I highly do encourage showing up to lecture though, because this is what you're paying for. Next is CS352 or Intro to Usability Engineering. Generally, the concepts introduced in this class are pretty interesting and I enjoyed the class overall. Just the specific implementation and offering of this course wasn't as interesting. So it teaches some of the basic concepts behind how to run user studies, making a design accessible, making a great user experience, stuff like that. Next is gonna be Software Engineering 2 or CS362. You notice that I haven't even taken Software Engineering 1 yet, but that'll be coming next in spring 2020. But Software Engineering 2 taught you all about debugging, or at least it was supposed to. The specific offering that I took was a little bit janky in the sense that it felt a little bit scrambled and the topics didn't really make sense when put all together, but they definitely have improved the course in recent years, so I can't really speak to its efficacy or applicability currently. And also just as a quick note, I forgot to mention, algorithms we used Python, operating systems was in C, usability we didn't actually program anything at all. Lastly was CS391 or social and ethical issues in computer science. It covered a huge breadth of topics though, and I feel like just honing in on some of those would have been a better way to cover some of that material and also just have a little bit more in-depth discussion on the nuances of these different topics. And the biggest perk was just having online finals because of you know who, so woohoo. Here comes spring 2020, which was probably the weirdest term that we've had, just because it was when we first transitioned to online learning and everything was still getting figured out. 40 or entry to databases, we discovered the basics of how to build a database. We started from just really basic SQL queries, given a database already implemented for us, how can we pull data from this database, before then moving on to actually creating our own databases and understanding what goes into building a database. Super important course and has a lot of applications outside, especially when you start to work with databases in the real world. Next was gonna be CS361 or Software Engineering 1. And this class focused more on how to build a product and project management. So we covered a lot of different topics in this class actually. This class teaches you about Agile, so how to work in sprints, how to plan out features for each sprint. And it also covered code hygiene and how to write good code. Applicability wise, it's a pretty important class and touches on important concepts that you need to succeed as a software engineer in the industry. Of course though, the best experience to ever get is going to be in industry, not just through classes. So do your best to see if you can get any hands-on experience working in industry. Next is gonna be CS372, which is Intro to Computer Networks, which is how computers talk to each other. There was a lot of algebra in this class and it was actually pretty difficult, at least more difficult than some of the other programming hands-on classes that I took that term. Well, not operating systems too, but we'll get there. 
On a daily basis, you probably won't be using too much of this knowledge from computer networks, but it is handy to know just to have a deeper understanding of computers generally speaking. Last was CS444 or Operating Systems 2. Operating Systems 2 was a beast of a class, but it was probably my favorite class in my program. So we are building out our own operating system called JOS from the ground up, from booting to memory management and segmentation and environments and parallelization. Super interesting class though, and it definitely taught me a lot more about how computers operate and the different processes that go on within a computer system. Next is fall 2020, which leads us to this present academic year. You'll notice that this is kind of a bundling of junior and senior year, and I also did take some upper division courses spring 2020 and winter 2020. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on here. Fall 2020 is when I started to explore more of the electives slash applications of computer science. Only a few of these courses are actually required in the program, so I had a lot of flexibility and freedom choosing the classes that I wanted to take this year. One of the classes that I really enjoyed was CS370 or Introduction to Security. So Intro to Security was a really cool class and we talked about a lot of different security principles at a high level and also just a few on a more in-depth level. There were a few programming assignments in this class which I didn't actually expect, but they were good applications of what we were talking about in class. I would highly recommend at least taking an Intro to Security class to see if you're interested in the security field. And if not, it's still a good lesson learned in regards to a lot of the aspects covered in these kinds of classes. The next class is CS446 or Networks of Computational Biology. I was kind of on the fence of if I wanted to take this class and I don't think I enjoyed the class as much as I would have if I had taken some other application derivative class. Yeah, I just wasn't super interested in science applications or the hard sciences. So while it was neat to see the interactions in computer science and how we can use programming to extract data from biological subjects, it just wasn't really for me. CS461 or Senior Software Engineering Project is the capstone class. As a senior here in Oregon State across the engineering program, you have to participate in creating some sort of capstone senior project. This was a pretty writing intensive course just because there's a lot of documentation that needs to get done throughout the year. So do be on the lookout for that. Lastly, in fall 2020, I also took Inclusive Design or CS468. This class was more interesting than the usability class and it kind of built on a lot of the topics in the usability course. This class was more of a group project and I did enjoy the group project aspect of it because we had a lot of freedom to build something that we enjoyed doing. We're almost there, I promise. Winter 2021, this previous term, I took Programming Language Fundamentals or CS381. It can kind of be weird to see Programming Language Fundamentals as a three and level course, but the class is really more focused on functional programming, which is just a specific type of way in which we solve problems and answer questions using a programming language. That class uses Haskell, which is going to be probably a language you're not super familiar with. And this is in contrast to an imperative language like Python or an object-oriented language like C++. I also took CS427, which is cryptography, which was also a pretty fun class, low programming, but a lot of proofs. Again, I really like this course, so I'd highly recommend it if you're interested in security. Next is just another continuation of senior software project slash capstone, CS462, so I won't harp on that too much. And then I also took Advanced Web Dev or CS499, which is kind of a special topics course. So this class was pretty interesting and it taught us a lot about web development. Obviously you knew that by the title, but it covered React and it also taught Redux, authentication, the auth O, and finally also implementing an API using GraphQL. Okay, finally this term that I'm in and that we're finally about to finish. I took the last class for this capstone course, CS463. And again, just a continuation of working on a year long project in a group with a project partner. Another interesting class is CS493, which is called Application Development. And it might be a little weird from the name, but really this class is just about setting up an API and all the basics behind creating an API, from just the basics of an API using Node.js and Express, all the way up to authentication, rate limiting, having offline workers, and running all of this in Docker. Definitely a handy course if you're just going to general software engineering and want a class to boost up your skills and help round out your knowledge of backend development. And for my last real course this term, I also took CS499, again, which is just a special topics course for a class called Cyber Attacks and Defenses. Super, super fun course. I don't think I can really do it justice, so I'll read the official description here for this class. This course covers advanced techniques for attacks and defenses in cybersecurity. This class covers reverse engineering, vulnerability analysis, exploit development, patching vulnerabilities, and bug hunting, etc., with a lot of hands on labs. 
So each week we have seven to 10 or so different challenges. And it's basically in like a capture the fly kind of format where you need to exploit a program in some shape or form and use that exploit to then get a flag, which will basically be the answer. All in all, that is my CS degree. I don't really know how many minutes this took, but you'll know from the title of this video. And I really hope that this helped give you some insight on the kinds of classes that I've taken during my time as a CS student and some of the classes and knowledges that you'll learn during your time as a potential CS student as well. Whether you're a college student right now or an incoming college freshman, let me know down below what one of your favorite classes is or one of the classes that you're looking forward to taking the upcoming years. I'd probably say that Cyber Attacks and Defenses was definitely my favorite class just because of how unique it was and just the sheer amount of things that I've learned in the short 10 weeks taking this class. As always, thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you all next week for a brand new video that I'm really excited for. Bye. So if I didn't touch you, baby, you should know